Hello and welcome to Unleash. This week we get an inside look at the largest canine training facility anywhere in North America. For nearly 30 years, Von Lick Kennels has trained over 5,000 police, government, and civilian agencies, and they're simply the best when it comes to training canine teams for explosives, narcotics, and protection duty anywhere in the world. And we're getting an inside look right here on Unleashed. There are over 86 million dogs in the United States, but only a select few are considered elite working or sporting dogs. From police and military canines to hunting and sporting dogs and everything in between, meet the dogs your dog aspires to be. Get ready to see man's best friend in a whole new light. This is Unleashed. I'm Ken Licklider. Um, I'm here in Denver, Indiana. I'm a retired Air Force Senior Master Sergeant. I've been in dogs for 42 and a half years. That's all I've ever done, that's all I'll ever do. I went through the military programs. I, uh, in about 1993, I retired and started a kennel here in Indiana. I started in my living room. I started with an old shed out back and it's now a 600 acre facility. We can hold over 500 dogs. We've got our own planes, trains, automobiles. People come here from all over the world. We train civilians, uh, civilian police departments, correctional facilities. We also train special forces military. I was there at Lackland when everything was changing and I actually was in charge of the kennels on Lackland Air Force Base. Vietnam had just ended and we realized very quickly that we couldn't use the same style of training that we used in Vietnam here in peacetime, you know, United States and, and abroad. So we changed our entire program from defense-oriented dogs to prey-oriented, and we discovered the Malinois. I was a very lucky guy. I was at Lachlan Air Force Base, the hub, and they started their first buy trips in Europe, and I got to go. So when we bought, we went over there and bought six breeds, and we brought all six breeds back to the States, and they gave me two of each one at my kennel working on the base as police officers, um, and we got to see which ones did the best job as a dual purpose dog. Right there at the same time, we were changing from aggressive response to passive. And all of us fought it at first, you know, that we're men, we don't like to change. But um, I fell in love with the passive. I took it out into the civilian world. I changed a lot of it. Uh, uh, hunting with bird dogs, I discovered a way to, uh, to duplicate what the bird dogs did and it virtually changed the world uh, of dogs or the passive response dogs to sit and stare, just like the bird dogs do. We train both dogs and handlers here at Von Lick and um, we pre-train all of our dogs. And we do that so that they're at a certain level when the new handlers come in. We've done it so long that to us, the training of the dog is pretty easy. They're smart, that's why we that's why we purchase them, that's why they come here. The handlers. Handlers are all great people. They're, they're volunteers for this program. They're type A personalities, uh, which makes them tough in some ways. With a dog, there's a thing called LOP, Law of Primacy. And when you're training them, it has to be right, right from the very beginning, where we can take a guy aside and you know, stroke his back and tell him he's doing fine, but talk him through things. When you put him with a dog, it has to happen right, to, you know, the first time. And that's kind of tough for, for some of these guys. So we always tell you, it's the, the handler's the tough part, but they go through the first week and that's the toughest. We tell them in the first week, don't expect to be good. And that takes some of the pressure off of them. And by the second and third week, you, you see it. And, you, and uh, you can see it in their attitudes. You can see it in the, in the way they're reacting around the dog. But to see them take that animal, that we, we know that animal's gonna do it or we wouldn't present it to them. But to see that guy and know that he's gonna go out there and he's gonna hunt bad guys, he's gonna protect people, he's gonna find the explosives, he's gonna find the drugs. Uh, it's, a, it's a great feeling. And then they, they stay in touch, they send us articles, they send us pictures, they call us freaking out that they, that they just caught a bad guy. Uh, and you can hear it in their voices. 
And then we save people's lives. I've had many, 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 many hugs, many, many crying sessions with military and civilian alike. Uh, these dogs will save their lives and they know it and they rely on them. Uh, some of the stories that, that we've been told that would just make you cry. Uh, uh, the things that a dog has done. Dogs, have, we just lost one in here in Indiana, and the, the dog gave his life up for his handler. Uh, that's that's it's just amazing. Yeah. For your active dog, not just any dog food will do. It takes special care and nutrition to support their energy to work and play. That's why we made Kinetic Performance Dog Food. Each Kinetic formula is made with three animal proteins and no fillers like corn, wheat, or soy. This lets you feed less and still get more energy, faster recovery, and better weight maintenance. If health and performance matter to you, give Kinetic a try. We build it for our dogs, but you'll love it for yours. When it comes to elite canine and handler training, the best of the best turn to one place, Von Lick Kennels. Von Lick is the premier full-service canine training center and detection service provider in the world. Their world-renowned training methods and experienced training staff produce the best canine and handler training available anywhere. When only the best will do, join over 5,000 law enforcement, government, and civilian agencies who count on Von Lick Kennels. Yeah, these dogs, uh, we go through hundreds to find the one uh, that will come here, and we do. We did a thousand during the war a year. They're hard to find, but they're there, and they're athletes. They're super intelligent, and we challenge them with things that aren't. You know, we, we use natural things. We pair, you know, their prey drives, their their defense drives, uh, their hunt drives. We pair that with things that we want them to do, but you got to find the right dog. But when you find the right ones, they train up pretty easily. And the things that they do for their partners over there are beyond imagination. I'm Dan Parker. I'm the director of operations here at Von Lake Kennels. I'm directly involved in buying all the dogs out of Europe. Um, we're the only US company that has a kennel in Europe. So our guys are going around to the different clubs and and to the private individuals where they're, where they're buying the dogs. The difference that we have with the dogs that we're buying, it's customer based. And everybody has a different um, idea of what kind of dog that they want. Big, small, SWAT applications, military applications, um, street, you know, street work, or working in hotels, working in hospitals. So there's a large variety of different um, ideas or different types of dogs that we need to procure here um, for the customers. So they all have high drive. Um, the single purpose, we're really focused on the hunt that the single purpose dogs do. We're second to none in the United States as far as odor work goes. And then on the dual purpose side, it all depends on what application it's going to be. You've got some departments, SWAT teams, some military, they want the quiet dogs that'll stand their ground. They're strong. They're very social. They can be worked around a lot of people up close quarters, thrown into uh, personnel carriers, things like that. But they have to be smaller in size most of the time. They have to be very stealthy, very quiet. So. Um, as long as they, if they have all the energy that they want in the world, but they can be quiet and doing it, that's what um, a lot of our customers are going to nowadays. All our dogs before they go into a class are pre-trained. We know their personality, we know their drives, we know their strengths and their weaknesses. And for whatever the communities, the handlers, the communities, the sheriffs or chiefs want, um, we'll take that group of dogs and put it into that program. And they come in, we don't ever tell anybody, this is your dog. We don't hand them dogs. We have the luxury by having a, such a large number of dogs that we can put groups of dogs together for them to actually select from. And I'm gonna tell you that 
Our customers are not like Walmart customers. Um, we get very close with our customers. We, we build a bond, we build a friendship. Um, we've dealt with each other for years. And, you know, if I can have, you know, my very close friends from the Secret Service roll in here, and I can hand them dogs that makes their life easier and their selection, I call it make their selection tougher because now they gotta weed through it, then I've hit a home run. That's what I want to do for our customers. That's the funnest part of it. Um, you know, at the end of the day, we're putting dogs out there that are trained to find explosives. They're trained to find narcotics. They're trained to track and apprehend people. Um, they have to be able to do their job. They have to be very physically fit. They have to be the athlete, but we also the big thing is, I've lost close friends that were canine handlers that have been killed. Um, in fact, one was on my department. And when these guys leave here, they better be a team that's strong enough and understand it well enough and are able to do what they need to do that it would be somebody that I would actually put on my old police department's team. If they lack any of that, I'm not gonna put them out there because now they're on the front line. So, um, one in four police shootings anymore are canine handlers because they're out front, yeah. I need you to get me out of the country, out of here, away. All in exchange for a sip of coffee? Yeah. It's Black Rifle Coffee. Just try some. Later, loser! Why don't you head over to blackriflecoffee.com and get yourself set up with a Coffee Club subscription. Feel like the season just got started? Well, there's no reason to stop hunting now. At Highland Hunting, you can enjoy a great upland experience through the end of March. Located in southeast Iowa, we have over 1,200 acres of diverse upland habitat with the best flying and wildest birds you'll find at any upland outfitter. Our incredible staff and great accommodations let us show you a true Iowa upland experience at Highland Hunting. Give us a call and schedule your next adventure today. Well, a dog is, and you've heard this said before probably, it's the only animal that likes a man's company, a human's company, more than it does, you know, another dog. Uh, they've been domesticized for ever and ever and ever. They have all the functions that we can, uh, you know, use to help us uh, in farming and in, in raising other animals and protection. Uh, they have those skills and those abilities, so it's a perfect match, and they like being with us. And I think that's a, a man likes a companion. A man needs a companion, and with his nose and his abilities, it's a perfect match. You know, I, if you haven't figured it out by yet, I'm a pretty basic. I, I don't like getting into all these wild things, but I know that dogs care about four basic things. Uh, you cannot be anthropomorphic and think that they care about what you care about. They don't care about that. They don't jog. They don't, you know, read books. They want to be fed. They want to have water. They want to be able to breathe and they want to be able to procreate, okay? So if you can match something you want them to do with one of those four things, you can teach them to do anything. It's the same for us. Now we, because our brains are a little bit more developed, we want to read every now and then and we want to have hobbies. But a dog is a survivalist. He, if he's not getting one of those four things, he's asleep. Or he's laying down over there waiting on you to, to rustle something up. Um, the, the word anthropomorphic is very important. We put our values on animals. Uh, play drive, I'll fight anybody, there's no such thing. Everything a dog does that you think he's playing, he's honing skills to survive. You know, you, uh, well, see those puppies wrestling around, isn't that cute? They're not, they're not being cute. 
They're trying to become the dominant one of the pack so they get more food, water, sex, and air. They just want to survive. They want, they like being around humans. They're bullies. They can tell if you're scared of them. They can tell if they can get over on you. Um, yeah, you learn a lot of that just hanging out with them. Dogs' natural drives, that's everything. You have people say, well, oh, this dog, you can build this, or you know, you could do this. My belief is if they have it, they have it. If they don't, you might be able to uh, trick train it, you know, uh, cover over their inefficiencies. But I look for a dog that has a good steady character. He's afraid of nothing. He's environmentally sound. He's socially skilled. And I, I look for dogs that are strong, in, for detector dogs, in two really basic drives, prey and hunt. Um, with those two drives, you can make them hunt for anything and find anything. And they'll do it out of the drives that are inside of them. If you have to build that, if you have to cut artificially, come on, buddy, and, and do all these games, that's the dogs we had in the 70s and 80s. Nowadays, with these dogs from Europe, find the one with the prey drive, find the one with the hunt drive, pair it up, and off you go. We, so we talk about the final satisfaction of prey drive is to eat. It's not to kill, it's to eat. Um, it's, it's kicked in from quick movements. It's, you know, it's the rabbit running from Kongs. People, if you ever wonder why a, a Kong is built the way it is, it's because it bounces like a rabbit running from you know, the wolf or, or the coyote or the dog. Um, but prey drive is something moving. The problem with just prey drive is I've never seen cocaine run from you. Um, so you've got to know how to, to use cocaine. The, the fact that they want to possess, that, that's the prey drive. They want to possess the ball. They want it so badly. And that, that works with it. But without the other drive, hunt, um, you, you, you've got a dog that you've got to talk into everything. And we've learned in the last 20, 30 years that that's not the way you want to do it. Final satisfaction to hunt is to hunt itself. Uh, a lot of people, did, we didn't get that back in the 70s and 80s. We didn't get it. Uh, we wouldn't buy a dog if he wouldn't be possessive, if he wasn't a prey freak. But we started to understand that the hunt drive is what gets them to go out and hunt for something. Remember now, they don't give a hoot about cocaine. They don't care about explosives. They, they're doing this for the ball or the towel or something that simulates prey. And the hunt part of it is so that they will hunt forever and never give up. If you watch a dog that's strong in hunt drive, you can just be walking around the house or you can cut him He's going to be constantly hunting for something. It's in them. God put it in there. And if you, you look for a dog with strong hunt, strong prey, and you've got a good detector dog. No matter what you feed, sometimes your dog needs a little help to keep them at the top of their game. For some dogs, it can even mean the chance to just live a normal, healthy life. Our kinetic supplements are formulated to meet specific needs to get and keep your dog at optimal health and performance. Your dog will love them and you'll be amazed at the difference they make. If your dog needs an extra boost, give Kinetic a try. We build it for our dogs and you'll love it for yours. So I know you feel protected in the suit. Don't make any sudden movements without me there giving specific instructions. Uh, got That's it? Fine. Dogs love it. <laughs> I heard that you just bought insurance online. You really should work with somebody like Tom who has the experience and knows what he's doing. Oh, really? Safari Insurance is an independent agency. They represent companies like Auto Owners Insurance. They guide you by showing you all the coverages to keep you safe. Then you decide what fits you best. They guide, you decide. Okay, so we always say that our most important people, um, aside from our trainers, are our kennel staff and how they take care of the dogs. But throughout all the years that I've been here, um, this has been a, a testing and proving ground for dog food. I've seen the different things that we've had to do through the years. I've seen the different uh, brands of dog food and, and recipes that we've had to feed part of the kennel and then another part, another one, and, and the thousands of dollars that we spent on dog food. The nutrition is the most important part of this game. 
because if those dogs aren't taken care of, if they're not healthy, if they don't feel good, we can't train them. So those dogs have to be come out of those kennels every day that our trainers take them out and be ready to rock and roll. If they're not, we can't train them, we can't move them, and it just snowballs into um, a really bad situation. Oh my gosh, there's only one dog food out there. Um, I've fed everything that you could imagine. I've, I've helped develop dog foods out there in the United States and abroad. You know, I could get free dog food. All I'd have to do is endorse something that I that didn't work, and I won't do that. But Kinetic is uh, is all we feed, and we push it to everybody that we talk to. It's uh, it takes care of the animal. Without a, without the animal healthy, I can't train him. So he's got to be healthy. He's got to be in good shape, and Kinetic Dog Food does that for us. We went for several years before we came across Kinetic. Um, our dog food supplier prior to Kinetic was giving us free dog food and did so for about five years. Now, if you ever saw our dog food bill by the semi trucks that come in here, you know we go through a lot of dog food. And for us, the size of our kennel, um, for us to walk away from free dog food to start buying Kinetic dog food really makes a statement um they they do the dogs are um healthier the dogs do have more energy the dogs are more physically fit the dogs do look good their coats are shiny um and at the end of the day besides besides we need their athleticism and um, the power and the energy to get through the hot days and the cold days that we put them through and everything that we that we do with them at the end of the day they still got to look pretty too when we go to sell them because a lot of people come here and they they're looking for a specific look and so and kinetic has checked off every box that we ask of these dogs What value does the dog bring to a police program or a military program? Oh my God, it's a force mul multiplier that you cannot duplicate. No machine can ever do what a dog's done. And they proved that during the war. The Army wrote a report stating that. They, they're a force multiplier. They will save your life willingly. And their detection capabilities, their, their sense of smell, their sense of eye, hearing, eyesight, is much more than ours so it's a that the war was a horrible thing but it did a lot for our knowledge of K9 and, and our our knowledge of the value of K9 and the army wrote a report that stated that there is nothing that will ever match what those working dogs did over there now i think you can learn a lot from a dog you know there's dogs i'll guarantee you that are watching the show and watching the other dogs and i'll guarantee you people have seen them getting up and paying attention, maybe even getting excited about what's happening on there, but they're smarter than what we ever thought they were. And uh, yeah, the, the dogs at home are, are not different in the dogs that we use. Maybe they're not as driven, but they can tell you things. Someone's coming up to the, to the, to the door, you know, a minute before you realize they're coming. Um, He'll know when you're not feeling well. Uh, there's dogs that, that know you if you have cancer. You know, I don't think there's anything you can't train a dog that has the desire to be trained, and most of them do. Well, I hope you enjoyed meeting the folks from Von Lick Kennel, and I hope that you've taken something away from this week's show. You know, I say it every week, but the things that we ask of our dogs and the things that they do for us every day are truly remarkable. And remember, that ability is there in your dog as well. So get out there and spend some time with your own canine partner, and we'll see you next time on Unleashed.